Hello and welcome to a look at the standard deviation of a single asset or investment with me, Andy Duncan, here at Finlingo.com. Before watching this video, you might want to watch one we did earlier on how to calculate the variance of a single asset. Getting back to the standard deviation of an asset, why is it so useful? Well, it tells us how much we can expect the return of an investment to vary over a particular time period. Here we've got 10 annual returns from a single portfolio investment. So that's 6%, down to 3%, really down to 0%. 4%, 2%, way up to 9%, right down to 1%, up to 7%, up to a fantastic 10%, and then to finish off with 8%. But how are these figures spread over the full 10 years? That's where the standard deviation comes in. From these returns, we can get an average of 5% and then use the differences between the actual returns in this average to construct a normal distribution. From the normal distribution, we can calculate a population standard deviation of 3.32%, which we'll do later if these 10 returns are every return ever recorded. And we can also calculate a sample standard deviation of 3.5% which is slightly looser if those 10 returns are just a sample from a larger population. Just for fun, we'll do the actual calculation on a cunning spreadsheet. And by the way, you won't need to do this in any financial exam. You'll just get given all the numbers and then you have to pick out the three key bits of information. But we'll get to some real questions later where we actually do this. So on this amazing spreadsheet, we insert those numbers again. 6%, 3%, 0%, 4%, 2%, 9%, 1%, 7%, 10%, and finally that 8%. The total number of returns we already know as 10. Once we've got all the numbers in, we can then find an average return of 5%. Subtract this average from all the actual returns, and then we square those results and add them up into a final sum. We can then generate a population standard deviation, or sigma, by dividing this sum by 10 or n, and then by square rooting this number. If the 10 returns are just a sample, we create the sample standard deviation, or S, by dividing the sum by n minus 1, which is 9, and then we square root this 2. This gets us to a slightly larger number. We've now got some good measures of how volatile or risky our investment has been over the last 10 years, or in other words, how much it goes up and down in a particular time period uh, that we can expect. But that was a lot of work. But fortunately, as I said earlier, it is much easier to do with an actual exam question. So on Finlingo, this is a population question. n is equal to 4, and the variance sum is 69.2081. Let's move those numbers over to another incredible Excel spreadsheet to get our population standard deviation. So it's population, the total number of returns is n, or 4, and the sum of the variance column is 69.2081. Divide this sum by 4, and this gets us a population variance of 17.30. We then square root this variance to get a population standard deviation of 4.16. And amazingly, it's correct. Now we can do a sample question. Here the number of returns is also 4, and the sum of the variance column is 182.373. Let's get this over to the spreadsheet. Obviously in the exam you do all this work on a calculator. So that's sample, n equals 4, the sum of the variance column equals 182.373. So we divide that 182.373 by n minus 1 or 3 to get a sample variance of 60.79. We then square root this variance to get a sample standard deviation of 7.80. Pick the right answer, and the job is done. Get on over now to finlingo.com to get an infinite number of questions on the standard deviation of a single asset, along with hundreds of other CFA question types. Finlingo. Speak. Finance fluently.